Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week, we have an interesting project from Postman. Postman is the chief developer of Gamebox Systems. If you don't recognize this PCB, this is the PCB for a Wii Mini. So it looks like this is some sort of an HDMI output mod for the Wii Mini. Here's another picture of the front and back of both PCBs. I can see some flex cables going all over the place, but I don't see an HDMI port. It looks like there might be a spot for up here in the corner, but this is gonna be some kind of a HDMI output mod for the Wii Mini. Now, yes, Postman does work for Gamebox, but I don't 100% know if this is going to be a Gamebox product ever. They actually said in the comments here that this is a side project, and that's fair. But I think it's really great that we have mod developers branching out to other consoles. I think that's a great way for them to learn and to share the experience that they have working on one mod and share that to other consoles and other types of mods. Next up this week, we have an Instagram post from BoxyPixel. This is a aluminum GameCube controller. BoxyPixel is known for making aluminum case shells and other things, so it's kind of surprising, but also not surprising that they would try to machine a GameCube controller shell. Now, I'll have to be honest and say I don't really like the look of aluminum machine things. I just kind of think they're too bulky and I don't really like the shiny silver kind of color. But I'm really curious how this would feel in the hand, just like a heavy controller. It probably would be pretty cool. Keep your hands cool if you're gaming for a long time. Some Melee player is thinking that this is gonna be a great controller, I'm sure. Anyways, this is just a prototype. I'm not sure what the finished controller is going to look like, and I'm not sure about the price either. I'm sure this is not gonna be a cheap aluminum GameCube controller shell. Next up this week is an interesting Sega Saturn project from TZMWX. I gotta like look at it and read it. This is called the Saw and it's a Saturn SDL or SD loader cartridge. So this is like a flash cart for the Sega Saturn. Before we take a look at the GitHub, I just wanna look at the pictures here. It looks like it's just the cartridge thing and there's not any other boards. I figured that they might have to do some other kind of internal modification to get this flash cart working with the Sega Saturn, but I don't really see anything other than this PCB that goes into the cartridge slot. So let's look at the GitHub. It says, Saru is a Saturn CD-ROM emulator. It's inserted into the cart slot to realize this CD block function of the original motherboard and load and run games from an SD card. It also provides the one megabyte, four megabyte accelerator card function. So it's kind of like one of those three in one, four in one cartridges, but using a flash cart instead of just as an action replay. So I'm not sure if this is the final version, but it looks like there are the files that you could use to build one of these yourself if you really wanted to. I did look in the comments here on Twitter and it looks like a couple of people are complaining that Sega Saturn cartridge slots are not really that reliable. And I'm not really sure how true that is. I never really had a Sega Saturn when I was kid. So if you have any comments about that, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you'd be comfortable using a flash cart for the sake of Saturn. Next, I wanted to talk about a beta firmware for the OSSC. Now, I haven't said the letters OSSC in a really long time now, but I wanted to talk about this forum post from Marx, who is the developer behind the OSSC. Long story short, it looks like Marx is trying to take some of the features that he developed for the OSSC Pro firmware and sort of backport them to the original OSSC. It looks like the main goal of this new firmware is to try to get the OSSC to be more compatible with a wider variety of sort of input signals. I know for one thing, like the NES RGB, and NES has a really hard time being upscaled by the OSSC, but I have a feeling that they're talking about like arcade boards and things with really strange sync. So they say that many issues related to sync slash mode detection with more exotic consoles, home computers, or arcade boards should now be fixed slash fixable. The only downside to this new beta firmware is that it only works if your OSSC has a hardware modification. There's a list of things that you have to do here, solder on an SMD resistor, uh, you'll have to read the description if this is something that you actually want to try. And it looks like you might lose the ability to use the red LED. So if you still use an OSSC or you have one lying around and you're comfortable with modding it, maybe you should try out this beta firmware to see if the compatibility with certain consoles is improved. Next, I wanted to talk about an exciting release from Red Herring. This is the OpenTendo Top Loader. OpenTendo Top Loader is a replacement PCB for the NES top loader. The goal of this project is to be a one-to-one -one recreation of the original board, just using modern components as much as possible. You will need to use some of the components from the original board
board, like the CPU and PPU and some of the like controller connectors and things. But I will say that the goal of this project is to not add features to the top loader. It's really just to be a replacement motherboard for the original motherboard. Over on the GitHub are all the files that you need to order one of the boards for yourself, as well as to get a list of all the materials that you'll need to build one of these. If you're sort of interested to see what the process is for building one of these, I have a live stream playlist where I go through building the original OpenTendo, which is the front loading NES. So I think what I might do is sometime in the future, I'll get all the parts to build the OpenTendo top loader and I'll have to redo my top loader with this board. Next up this week is an announcement from Pixel Effects about a new line of mods that they're gonna be coming out with this year. It looks like their goal is to create a series of HDMI output mods for a bunch of different consoles at a lower level price, so like $99, and they're calling it the X Digital Lite. And if we look at the picture, it actually kind of explains the different tiers that they're hoping to have. So there's the light tier, which is tier one, there's the pro tier, or tier two, and then the ultimate tier. I think somebody asked about what they would classify their current generation of mods, and I think they would classify them as ultimate. So that's kind of a reference point here as we go through the list of features. So it looks like the light tier is only going to output up to 480p. The pro tier and the ultimate tier go up from there to 1080p and 1440p for the ultimate. It's kind of the same situation for deinterlacing methods. So like the light only has Bob deinterlacing, whereas the ultimate has the motion adaptive deinterlacing. As you can see, it's kind of all over the place that the light tier does not have some of the more higher end features like scan line, custom scan lines and things like that. It does have basic scan lines, but it doesn't have some of the newer, more like CRT like filters. And I know this is kind of a side note, but I wanted to mention that somebody asked about the Xbox digital. Dan Kuntz said that, yes, this is closer than you think. So I'm not really sure what that means if they're hoping to have a Xbox HDMI mod coming out soon. I think that was just a side note, but it was posted on as a comment on this post. So I don't know, I'm curious to hear what you think about this. When I usually buy something, I tend to buy like the best thing that I can buy, the best thing that I can afford. And usually it's those old ultimate mods or whatever. So I don't personally have a need for the cheapest options of things. However, we're gonna come back to that in a second. And I guess now a problem that I could see is that this is now a lot of different products to support and provide you know, stock for. There are a lot of people still waiting for the existing digital mods. A lot of them have been sold out for a long time. And this is not like a gripe on pixel effects or anything. Obviously they can't be producing PCBs and selling them all the time. So they have other things that they can do while they're waiting. But I'm just genuinely curious if this is gonna make their life harder, you know, having to support and differentiate all these different product tiers. For the big story this week, I wanted to go over something that Voltar posted on Twitter the other day. He was talking about this new new Wii HDMI mod, but he also kind of brought up a really good point that I wanted to address too. In a nutshell, he was saying that this Electron Shepard Wii HDMI mod is going to be a useful tool in the future when we have things like the RetroTink 4K, which he has in the background. The idea being that if you can get a high quality digital output without any scaling, so whatever the console's native resolution is, if you can get that video from a HDMI mod piped out into HDMI, it doesn't really matter what resolution it could be coming from the console. So for example, these low lower cost HDMI mods, including the X Digital Lite that I just talked about, they only output 480p or whatever the original console signal is. But that doesn't really matter because in the future, instead of having analog video cables going everywhere and then doing upscaling on the analog video, you might be able to do the same thing for digital video also. Before I go forward, I wanted to mention a comment from Mike Chi, who is the developer behind the RetroTink 4K. And they mentioned that they've been talking to some of the other mod developers on creating a protocol so that the mod, so like this cheap Wii HDMI mod, can drive the external scaler, so control the external scaler from the mod. I guess it would be nice still to support consoles that don't have this new protocol if it ever exists. Like I said, older GC duels or the... NES HDMI mod, I can't remember what the original one was. Oh, the high definess. Those mods can't really get firmware updates anymore, so I doubt they'll ever support any new protocol that might come out in the future. So let's get back to the original topic, having cheaper digital output HDMI mods going to a higher end upscaler, something that is upgradable, like if there's ever a RetroTank 8K or something, all you have to do is update the scaler end and you don't have to update any of the digital mods in the future. With that being said, it's kind of already like that with analog if you already have a complete analog setup going into a scaler, I don't know how much better an all digital setup is going to be side by side. I would like to see a side by side with the RetroTINK 4K between an analog source and a digital one, because I'm sure that some people are gonna argue that analog is good enough and we don't really need more than that 
for a low cost option anyways. In a way that sort of makes the pixel effects light mods make a lot more sense now. If they release a light version for all of the consoles that currently have the digitals for, so the PlayStation 1, N64, Dreamcast, if they sort of have cheaper versions of those, then it sort of might make sense if you hook all those up to something like the RetroTank 4K or their pixel effects morph coming soon. Then you can have a pretty long lasting digital only setup for all of your retro scaling. I'm curious to know what you think. Do you think an all digital HDMI to upscaler solution for all of your retro consoles is a viable thing in the future? Do you think that is cheaper in the long run over having an analog or the higher end HDMI mod setup? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you want to learn more about a possible new X Station PCB. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.